Hey, how are you? My name is Daniel Calderon and welcome back to Corner Talks. Travel, something I know you and something I definitely miss, especially with this pandemic. The fact that we were not able to travel, that freedom of getting on a plane and setting our sights onto a new destination, a new world, that escapism. And we can't do it, unfortunately, because of the circumstances. I don't know where in the world in which you live, but here in Canada, borders are closed. <laughs> Uh, travel restrictions are so high that they're making it pretty much impossible or don't even want to dis encourage you to go anywhere. However, I do believe there will be a time where myself, you can hop on a plane, peace of mind, and travel the world again to see beautiful cities, beautiful cultures, and interact with these beautiful people from different worlds and consume what they live on a daily basis. As I said here in the lockdown, and I reminisce about a time where I used to travel, I'm here to share with you my top destinations. Yes, I'm putting it on the list. A destination where people call the most happiest place on earth. And it got that name for a reason. Now it's very sad to see, again, with the circumstances being shut down and not a lot of people being able to visit. However, when it was fully operational, when people were just going through the gates, millions and millions and millions, it was a sight to see. Disney World in Orlando, Florida was a great experience. I went when I was 13 years old and it's stuck in my mind ever since. I always tell my family like, you know, if we ever get the chance, we'll go back. Now you might be asking yourself, I'm 26 years old, why would I still wanna to go to a place that's designed for kids? Well, this place allows you to relive your childhood. This place is so sentimental, so nostalgic. All, all the right things that when you go there, you're just reminded of all the movies that you grew up with. and just a magic, it truly is a magical place, not to sound corny, but you go there and you see the, the characters you, you've loved come to life. I'm a big fan of the Jungle Book and I love Dumbo. And they're just like, you know, it's a celebration, celebration of the arts, celebration of cinema, celebration of creativity. And anyone, no matter what age, no matter what background, can go to this place and have a great time. The reason why it's such a powerful experience is because it's universal. There's not one person I know that doesn't know Disney or hates Disney, right? Even my sister, she doesn't watch a lot of Disney movies, but yet when she went, she had the best time because there's something about that experience that uplifts the soul, that makes you feel like you're in the right place and you're having a great time. You go to a place like, for example, Star Wars Galaxy Edge, that where I've yet to, to <laughs> visit. And as a huge Star Wars fan, you know, I'm proud to say like I would go there and I would be part of the experience. You know, they take a tour on the Millennium Falcon. Um, I know there's simulation rides. They make you feel like you're flying in space and Darth Vader is chasing you. I've been on a few of those before, but just to see what it has to offer, I have no idea what to expect, but I plan when things to get better to definitely visit Galaxy's Edge and check it out. Yeah, I'll probably be a nerd about it and build myself a lightsaber, but what the heck, you know? That's all part of the experience. The Big Apple, the city that never sleeps, it's New York City. I mean, how could I not put this on the list? This city is so grand, so impressive, just beautiful to look at. It makes honestly Toronto look like a suburb for how high these skyscrapers are, like the way they tower over you. And I used to joke around when I was a kid, like, cause I went there multiple times. And when I first went there, I was like, oh, it's just like Toronto, you know, being naive and being kind of ignorant. I, I was looking at Times Square, like, yeah, we have that, I think. I think it's Young and Dundas Square. And you go there when you get older and you just appreciate and just see the, the, the power of it, the grandness and you're consuming it all, the lights, the, uh, again, the festivities, the music, um, the artistry, the, the, the amount of talent that came from this city. It's impressive to see that all these talents, one thing for me as a filmmaker, knowing that you, know, you have people like, just to name a few, Robert Downey Jr., Scarlett Johansson, Larry David, Jon Favreau, you know, creator of Mandalorian, and he also directed Iron Man. They're just like you know, Scorsese, De Niro. It, it's amazing that all these people, they, they come from this, this city, the, the, this, this area um, in the United States where they've contributed uh, to cinematic history, television history, you know, Larry David with Seinfeld, Robert Downey Jr. You got Iron Man, Scorsese, you know, his name just, you know, speaks legend and, you know, De Niro doesn't even need an introduction. So I'm just a huge fan. I admire the fact that I was there in those streets to see, you know, where those talents came from. And I can see why, because when you walk the streets of New York City, you feel inspired, you get this creative drive, um, seeing the way, I'm a big fan of marketing and advertising, and you, you have these billboards that are literally the size 
half the size of a building. You go to somewhere like Times Square, the lights, the music, um, again, the advertisements and the way they're played. Again, I'm a big fan of this. Some people might be different. Some people might be more into the shopping, which I should mention is amazing. Endless uh, supply of stuff and, you know, such an array of options. Can get pricey, I'll be honest. Uh, not the cheapest place to buy, but if you're there for the experience and you want to see shopping to another level, check it out. Definitely an amazing place. And I should mention, I fell in love with New York City even more when I attended New Year's Eve 2019. Yes, before the pandemic, leading into 2020, I, with my family, went to New York City and stood there for 12 hours <laughs> like an idiot, waiting for that ball to drop in the freezing weather. But I didn't care because I was with my family, I was having a great time. The music, Post Malone was there, BTS. We had such a great time, great experience. And I honestly don't feel like I can top that that night. And that's something that I always imagine and, and is synonymous with New York City that night, New Year's Eve. And when you watch it on TV, obviously it's not the same because of the pandemic, but even if it wasn't for the pandemic, um, that moment would always be special and a special place in my heart. And then there's the motherland, the place where my ancestors reside from. I'm a first generation Canadian. So my mother was born in a city called Tedeschina, which is near Rome. And my father was born in a city called Tedveni, which is near Palermo, Sicily. And going through, going to these places, going to Italy in general was like almost like going back in time, just seeing where the roots are from, the people that, you know, pass down their traditions, the culture, um, the Italian way of life. And again, my grandparents, uh, you know, survived the war, World War II devastated all of Europe, including Italy. And, you know, seeing how hard life was or where they came from, their little towns and how they lived uh, was so inspiring, so beautiful, made you realize, you know, how good, um, not only you have it in, in Canada or, or this United States, if you're living there in, in the Western world, but the sacrifices they made to leave their home, to leave such a beautiful place. Like, I know, you know, maybe their economy isn't as great and they came for a better life, you know, for us, for our sake, but they, that really was a sacrifice that the, I, I'm sure it wasn't the same when they, at the time they left, but you know, the beaches and the views and the, again, the history, talk about the history. If you're a big fan of Roman uh, history, that that's just, again, something I'll talk to talk about, but the food too, like the food was just different. And it's because it was made in, in the natural sun. They got gardens, they got tomatoes, you know, growing out vines coming into your house, you just pick a tomato off, take a bite of it. You don't want probably even need to wash it. That's how fresh everything is. The architecture in Italy, what I enjoyed so much is it's so vast and it's so different. Every city has a different piece of architecture because it's almost like a snapshot in time. So Venice was like the medieval times, like the Renaissance period. It was, you know, you felt like you were living beside Michelangelo and I believe Marco Paolo actually lived there and we did a tour and we saw his little apartment. It was insane. And then you got Florence, right? You know, the way the churches are designed, that huge, beautiful church. I don't know the name of it. I forgot it. Don't kill me guys. But wow, you think churches are big in Canada or, you know, maybe you've seen the biggest church, but you haven't seen the biggest church until you've gone to Italy. And that church in Florence was huge. It took up so much space. And as my dad would say, it's to make you feel the power of God. <laughs> my favorite was the Colosseum. Um, a lot of these structures I should mention that when you see them in posters or Google images, when you see them in real life, sometimes they're underwhelming. Yes, believe it or not, sometimes it's like maybe they're too overhyped or you just don't feel the grandness of it. But the Colosseum, when I was there and I looked up and I just, it hit me like, wow. Cause you really, you think like these things are built like these buildings that we know, right? Like, oh, it was built like maybe a hundred years ago, 20 years ago, like that guy did it. And that, but 2000 years ago, can, like comprehending that time to know these workers, you know, the, these slaves that built this Colosseum and, and the amount of manpower it took, who knows how long, I believe it took 20, 30 years, maybe even more, but I don't even know how they did it. And I, they don't even have the same tools we have. So it's just very, very overwhelming and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sight to see. I wish I would have gone in. That's something I probably have yet to, to do when I go back, but um, you just felt the grandness of it, the power of the Roman Empire, as I would say. And then from Rome, I've experienced the coast, uh, Amalfi, Capri, Sorrento, and they're beautiful, beautiful uh, sites. You got, that was probably one of my favorites, I'll be honest, if not my favorite, and only because of just how, again, beautiful it was, but how 
unique it was, the way it was designed. You know, you got the buildings on the side of the cliff and how they're all stacked up. The sun was up, never, never, you know, raining, never cloudy, never sad and depressing. You got the yachts and the water and the boats and it's just, you could tell why people are happy and always, you know, healthy and lean and enjoying life. It's just a different vitamin, there's different vitamins going on in there. Something different in the air, something different in the water. Now we get to California, or some people might even say Cali, a place where I visited by myself. It was a solo trip, and I got to see three beautiful cities, three cities that I was told great things about, one city that I've visited once before when I was 17, and a great opportunity to relive and remind myself of my passion. And that was San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego. San Francisco was the first city I arrived in when I went to California. And we went through the ins and outs of the city and we got to learn all about the history and the culture and you know the art forms and people, all the, all the artists like Jimi Hendrix um, used to live there. I'm not sure if he was from there. You know, there's a lot of movies that were filmed there and shows, you got Full House, you got uh, Mrs. Delphire and Again, similar to New York City, a lot of inspiration and I'm happy I visited there. And then I made my way to Los Angeles. Yes, the city of LA, the place where I talk a lot to my friends, my family, probably annoy them of where I want to move, especially when things pick up with my filmmaking passion. And it, it's just an amazing place. I really love it. It's a combination of the city and the suburb, the style that's there, the Fairfax Avenue I visited, had a lot of great stores, dope and Supreme the layout again back with new york city the way they design these stores and the, the creativity the influence it has on you you know that it's inspired by the culture that's around there i took a a, a bike ride tour um we six seven hours across all of la yes it sounds crazy and it really was because i took i decided to think i was a badass a strong man and take a bike where it didn't have any electric motor so i was going up those hills all manual using these two legs here um, and it was uh, not too fun near the end. I was uh, bitching and complaining. <laughs> I was in a lot of pain. I would not recommend anyone doing it if you're not used to it. We have hills in Toronto when, when I cycle, but they are not or nothing compared to Los Angeles, especially Beverly Hills. There's a reason why it's called Beverly Hills. I should have known that probably. And then I made my way to the Cinerama Dome and the Grauman Theater. And that was, that was probably like my, my highlight. To, to see these movies, I watched it to Mad Mad World and Lawrence of Arabia and the Cinerama Dome. It's, Tarantino's my hero, right? So that's like a place that he really loves and he you know, showcased it in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And then there's San Diego. San Diego was a very brief trip though. And next time I go to California, I'll definitely make more time for it because I felt like it was youthful. It was the most energetic, the most uplifting city. You know, there, there was a lot of young people in their 20s, their teens. They were just hanging out on the beach, you know, having a good time, um, enjoying the food and you know, the skateboarding's a big thing there. Surfing, I should mention, is a big thing. And it's always sunny, it's always hot. It was something that I wish I would spend more time there, but nevertheless, I will make more time when I go back. Thank you again, guys, for joining me on another Corner Talks. I really hope you enjoyed my discussion on travel. Like I said before, I'm a big fan of going on an adventure, seeing what the world has to offer, seeing all these different cultures, all these different peoples, and being inspired by it. I know you are craving too, you are itching to just pick your next destination on the map. Um, I don't know when that time is gonna come, guys, but I feel like it's very soon as long as we stay safe and we do our thing until the time is right. If you agree or disagree with my destinations or what I have to say about them, please leave your comments down below. I always love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take care and I'll see you soon.